Ah, uh, it's nice to have a day off and relax at the golf course. Mr. Executive. Uh, huh? Rod? Is that you? No, it's me, Ronald Reagan. I'm here to warn you about the future. Ronald Reagan? The actor? What do, what do you mean, warn me about the future? In the future, I become... Boop! <laughs> huh? Mr. Executive, I'm sorry to disturb your 3 p.m. nap. I just thought I should warn you, Rod Serling just called, and he said he's coming down to the studio. Dolores, I was having the strangest dream. It seemed important. Keep Serling distracted when he gets here. I don't I don't want to be disturbed. I'll try, sir. Uh, now, where was I? Uh... <laughs> Mr. Executive. Ronald Reagan, it is you. I, I loved you in that monkey movie. Yes, it was great. Did you know that chimp almost strangled me? <laughs> anyway, I'm here to warn you. In the future, I become... Boop! <coughs> huh? Mr. Executive, I'm sorry, but... Yeah! Mr. Executive, I've got a brilliant script for you. Now let me in. I don't care! There's only one thing I want right now! A, a doorway? Between the light and shadow? No! All I want is... <laughs> chance to dream! They irritate the irritated, flex perplexities, poise puzzles, magnify mysteries, impose inquiries, and coagulate quandaries. But more importantly, they ask one question. Why would you make this? Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for listening. This is Why Would You Make This, the only podcast that's never sure if this is real or just someone's death hallucination, forcing you to ask the question, why would you make this? I am Jimmy Time. I am Time Commander on most social media. I am joined by my co-host, Huge. How are you, sir? Yo, yo, yo. What's going on? I'm, I'm filming a podcast. All right, that's cool. <laughs> Filming with these pads, yeah. <laughs> microphone cameras. That's I was like, don't do say it. it, don't say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good. And uh, you can find me on the Twitterverse at Atomic Huge, E-U-G, baby. There you go. Also joined by J Delta Wagwan. Wagwan. And find me on uh, Twitter thing, at the J Delta. Do hey. it or don't, whatever. That's America. Yeah. You, well, maybe actually, never mind. Yeah, yeah. in uh, America, they force you to do this. Yeah, things. no, I take that back. I take it all back. So, we watched Season 1, Episode 9, Perchance to Dream of the Twilight Zone, where a fatigued man fights to stay awake as he explains to his psychiatrist that if he falls asleep, it will trigger a nightmare, which will cause his heart to fail. Uh, so this was... Not really lost in translation. The French didn't care too much for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So we go, of course, to Bad Translator. Number one. Jack, Jack. Yeah, Jack. I mean, you know, the show's getting old. We... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sometimes uh, it goes easy listening. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Just Bad KBS. Translator. Giving you false information. Bad Translator. That's actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so they called it by chance on a dream. All right, yeah, yeah. Right, maybe. It also could have been what? <laughs> Galgi not to be afraid of. <laughs> what accent was that? I don't know, man, but that's <laughs> a bad translator. You tell me, yes, that's a bad yeah. translator accent. <laughs> yeah. Let's call a bad typo. It's not a bad translator. Yeah. <laughs> you tell me what accent that yeah. sounds like. Hey, you put some cultures in a box again. That's what you like doing. Finally, they mistranslated to perhaps to dream. Or perhaps. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go on to the truth hour. Truth or consequences. None of that, just the truth. Truth. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> truth, truth, oh, I thought like truth. the old the old truth steamboat was coming down. The, the truth, <laughs> truth, truth. <laughs> that like the 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 truth emotion. Truth, 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 truth
You ever been on like a, a road trip as a kid and you see the, the truth truck? Drive alongside you do the the, the hug and truth, truth. oh man that shit is great and then you go and you you have your kid and you go for an arm wrestling competition <laughs> it's the truth that's right I forgot you were Sylvester Stallone in a past life which was also like it was a double it was weird you you lived through this life then you died you were another guy and then you died again and then the third guy somehow wasn't back in time yeah. That's so, mm-hmm. despite the fact that you haven't been that guy yet, you also have been him already. And then ZZ Top comes out and they play the banjo. Um, and then I invent mm-hmm. Frisbee somehow. Yeah. Only at night, though. Okay. Yeah. Ultimate Frisbee. <laughs> now you're stretching the truth yeah, out to I a don't, limit. I gotta be honest, that was the part where I was like, wait a minute. Is this the truth hour? <laughs> I don't oh, know. No. This might be the lie hour. Oh, no, but I said it, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That is true. <laughs> that part's true. <laughs> All right. So we have here some uplifting news <laughs> from, <laughs> from January 27, 1959, oh, which, what is, happened? which is when this episode aired. The day after Thanksgiving, All right. Nazi war criminal Joseph Mengele, <laughs> the, the angel of death at the Auschwitz and <laughs> What am I reading here? What did you give me? Uh, he was he was granted citizenship. I can't read any of this shit. Oh, Paraguay. Paraguay took him in. Yeah. Oh, so suddenly someone's not so innocent, huh, Paraguay? <laughs> <laughs> can't act so innocent anymore. Mm, mm, I'm just saying, maybe maybe uh, the Jewish community should sort of uh, aim their efforts a little way somewhere else where. Mm, As huh? opposed to <laughs> non-Paraguay. <laughs> yeah, you heard me. Your country was supposed to be called Paragraph. Admit it. Oh, wait. It says that uh, he drowned in 1979. Never mind. Call, <laughs> call it off. Call it off. <laughs> call it off. <laughs> uh, so more than 2,000... Oh, excuse me. More than 20,000 protesters in Tokyo demanding that Japan end its military ties with the, U- with the U.S. stormed the grounds of the U.S. Parliament and an ensuing riot caused several in- yeah, injuries and deaths. Uh, that sucks for them. <laughs> uh, Perchance to Dream was actually the first episode not written by Rod Serling. <gasps> Unless, I guess, if you count the one that he just straight up stole. <laughs> yeah, he stole that one, bro. <laughs> so it's, uh, that's iffy. That's a little bit iffy there. Uh, what do we have here from My Birthday, Dot Ninja? Once again, you were a major or a captain from the year 1975. Almost 1975. <laughs> you reincarnated from the future. Oh, holy shit. Wow. No, it that doesn't. Is true. Yeah. Nothing but the truth. Woo. Truth. <laughs> truth. Truth. <laughs> Can't get off that truth train. The truth right. train has no brakes. <laughs> you better watch out before it derails yeah. and murders your entire town. <laughs> uh, I love that movie, Throw Mama from the Truth Train. <laughs> it's fucking great. And we're right back to Stallone. <laughs> oh, he's back. Uh, <laughs> so who stabbed you? Stallone. Stallone? Stabbed me. Was it thrown over from the train? Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. That's, wait <laughs> no. No. He is. Oh, my God. <laughs> he is. Yep. <laughs> it turns out. Oh, God. I, I thought I was going crazy for a second. <laughs> well, you were. I was, yeah. He's in it. Now, what I'm saying is, <laughs> that's what I'm saying is I thought I was, but now that I know I am, I feel better. It's, it's like comfort. It's comfort inside me. <laughs> you probably confused it. With <laughs> <laughs> Stop for my mom. Yeah, that's, a co- that's a common mistake. Oh, that's what I did. I, I can see why you would that make that me. mistake. I apologize. Yeah, no. Stop or my mom will shoot. <laughs> that was the one. While I throw her from the train. <laughs> yeah, that was with Danny DeVito and... Um, Schwarzenegger. And Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's what? That's what it was. That's what <laughs> that's it was. That's what it is. Yeah. That's it. And then... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. no Oscars, though. No Oscar <laughs> nomination. There were no Oscars in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody named Oscar. Nobody named Oscar. Was allowed <laughs> on set. <laughs> yep. Or in the, the, the filming. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, fine. union rules have gotten a little different since then. That's, yeah. yes. Now there's a mandatory one Oscar rule. Yeah, yeah, we're allowed to have one. Some say that they got a little more lenient. Some say with they, that they've gotten tighter. It's, you know, it's... The rules is really opinion-based. Wait, you're saying I got an Oscar? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people are only like it. Some people are like, I can't believe we got a whole Oscar now. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, let's 
Go ahead and move it on over to the best hour. Wait, hold on. Oh, wait, what? What happened? The guy reincarnated from 1975 into 1959. What about him? What was he? Oh, I guess he was a leader um, leader and a major and a captain. Oh, just like all the other guys. uh, Well, well, this guy was born somewhere in the territory of Hungary. Oh, okay. So there you go. There's whatever era that is. Did Wait. (laughs) It's near Paraguay, I think. (laughs) <laughs> definitely not, but this is the uh, truth now. So I think you're I mistaken. definitely is now. Yeah, at least in 1975 <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's I, I don't. That was a long time ago. Yeah, the country's moved since then. <laughs> well, that's what earthquakes are. <laughs> <laughs> the country's moved. Earthquakes <laughs> are caused by tectonic plate shifting, which are you know every country has its own tectonic plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a region code for DVDs. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. The plate it's shifts. When it's they they go on like summer vacation. But because we live on Earth, because we can fit on Earth, but the 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 continents are so big, they have to live on a continent Earth, which is bigger, and it goes around. That's, that's the so, Continental Congress. So yeah, they're yeah. and they're years longer than ours, which yeah. is why oh, like dog years? It seems like it's longer. Like what? It's just randomly uh, moving now. No, it's finally spring for them. And yeah, that's that when they sense. invented leap year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I believe Leap Erickson. Help the name it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so can, can we now move on to the best hour? Our favorite. Ah, <sighs> Troy McClure. Hello, I'm Troy McClure. You'll recognize me from such psychological self-help films as "What Are You Nuts? Stop That," or "Repress to Success: Emotional Habits of a Highly Effective Male." Today, I'm here to talk to you about your completely rational fear of death. All right, so this episode was written by Charles Beaumont, which was based on a story of the same name, and who's published an episode of Playboy, really? Yeah. That, like, did they just not have titties back then? Like, what? I Believe it or not, some people used to get Playboy for the articles. But, like... They just had sci-fi short stories in Playboy? Yeah. What was that magazine? (laughs) What even was it? I think that's why, like, Hustler came out, and Hustler was like, no, this is going to be actual, like, fucking poor. You know, Playboy was, like, tasteful. Like, ooh, look, tasteful titties and sci-fi stories. (laughs) Oh, I see. Like, like, Hustler was a strip joint, and, like, Playboy was, like, the jazz club with topless waitresses, like... You just, yeah. you just listening to jazz, smoking a cigarette, hanging out, and then there was also some titties over your shoulder. If you yeah. it wasn't a big deal. It was just hanging out. <laughs> it was just there. It was just there. It wasn't a big, yeah. But you know, of course, they hired their waitresses as models so they could dictate whether or not they had the right body type and stuff like that. So they can. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Disney makes the same rules for yeah, their yeah, employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do it to like you know, 13 year olds and stuff. Yeah, pretty sure Disney does the same thing. I gotta fix that echo. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. <laughs> so this is also directed by Robert Flory. <laughs> is that right? He like like the floor, but Oh Flory! <laughs> yeah, old Flory there. <laughs> he just lets people walk all over him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Richard Conti. I believe they said that name. Plays Edward Hall. I didn't even know people had names in this. <laughs> Yo, people had names? Yeah. All right, so he is apparently famous for Ocean's Eleven. Oh, from, oh the uh, Frank Sinatra one? Yeah. From the 1960? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what? Barzini? He played uh, the Don film Barzini God- oh, in, Don in, Bar- in The Godfather. Oh, Don Barzini. I was like, Bar- who's Barzini? Is that like, like Beluga? Like one of the other? Like, <laughs> the great the Barzini. Great Barzini. Yeah. yeah. It was the Godfather versus his arch nemesis, <laughs> the, the magician. The magi- yeah. I, that makes sense. It was the Catholic Church versus the, the evil of magic. Of course. <laughs> I'm remembering now which Godfather film this was. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, he was also in the Exorcist film from 1975 and then The Return of the Exorcist. Uh, he died in 1975. What? After being kept alive for two weeks? Like what? In an iron lung? Or like I see you. Yeah, he kept you alive and constant CPR twenty four seven. Ironically, from a massive heart attack. Oh wait, but not ironic. Oh wait, yeah, ironically, because that's how he dies in the. That's, that's a little cruel. We got to fix that echo. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> 
Speaking of having a stroke. What? Who had a stroke? Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Wait, who, wait, we are off the rails. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening right now. All right, so John Large played Dr. Elliot, the doctor. You're never going to hear his name, doesn't matter. <laughs> the doctor, doctor. He played the chief in Dirty Harry, Father Nuncio. That's how you say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've been watching freaking Nuncio for 15 years, and now you change the Z to a C, and you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what any of this stuff is. Uh, the 1979 film uh, Amityville Horror and the prosecuting attorney in the 1982 film Airplane 2, the sequel. I remember, I realize I do not remember Airplane 2 at all. No, well, that's when they went to space, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no. I don't remember a prosecuting attorney, though. No, and honestly, I'm pretty sure I get parts of that mixed up with uh, whatever the, the movie was where, like, Leslie Nielsen and there were, like, aliens at the White House. And like scary, scary movie, movie three. <laughs> no, not scary movie three. There was another one. Oh, great! So scary movie stole where there were like aliens, but also like Bill Clinton's the president. Oh, they used to play it on Comedy Central all the time. It was one of those bad Leslie. Spy Hard, maybe. No, spy- were there, there was another one besides Spy Hard too. There was another one that was just like Spy Hard. It, it was the same plot where he's like, I'm must. A- a spy or something, but this time there's aliens. Like Naked Gun 3 or something like no, that? Or... It was like that, there's but with aliens. I, it, I don't even think, maybe it was one of the Naked Gun movies. What's the movie where there's a scene where he's like, he's like, I had, it's time to have like protected sex. And then like, that's Naked Gun. And, and they're, they're wearing like condoms on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, their bodies. That's Naked Gun. So then what the fuck am I thinking of? There definitely is another one, but it's not Spy Hard and it's not Naked Gun. It's something else. 2001, A Space Travesty. I have not seen that. <laughs> well, some of us are a little more cultured what, in film. What year was that from? you with your microphone wire. <laughs> <laughs> Which from is technically year... my microphone wire. Please do not do that. <laughs> it is from the year 2000. Oh, that explains it. Yeah. <laughs> the... Okay. The... Uh, I know. There's... They couldn't even release it in the year 2001. Like, no. uh... Well, they released it in 2000, so then by the time... It gets out on VHS. It's capitalized on the 2001 oh, fever. Oh, that's smart. That's smart. And then people will go, it must be new. But really, it's a year old. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Wrongfully accused. Oh, that's the other one that we were thinking of? He has had a long career of the same film, huh? <laughs> oh, man. I am going through all his... Don't oh, do that. It's You're going to feel... Yeah. Oh. You're going to realize how many films he had that didn't go well. I just remembered him in Surf Ninjas just now. Oh, I own that film. What do you mean? That's Yo, a great, me too, that's, an old, that's an amazing I film. I love Surf Ninjas, but I, I, I never remember him with the, with the thing. I just always just remember everything else. You know, like, when they, they, you've just, you've reached the hotline of Dr. Yeah, I'm not in right now, but please leave a message and whatever. You don't know, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the recurring joke where he can't get through his fucking answering machine in time while he's torturing people. God, I love that movie. I love that. Like some people say, Paraguay is, is here, here. <laughs> <laughs> which is the same laugh as the father from Back to the Future. I will, I guarantee, it's the same kid just back in the past, <laughs> or in the future. Oh, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Who's to say how reincarnation works? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I know for a fact everyone's born in 1975. <laughs> so. Uh, what else? Yeah, finally, Suzanne Lloyd plays Maya and Mrs. Thomas uh, as Barbara Wakefield. Oh, and in the no, I thought, sorry, I thought I got that mixed up. She plays Barbara Wakefield in the 1965 film The Avengers. Is that the British one? No, that yeah. was in 1980. That was in 98. Oh. Well, it definitely wasn't uh, Marvel's The Avengers. <laughs> well, there's another Avengers that isn't a Marvel The Avengers. Yeah, oh my one, god, get oh, original man. names, you jerks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. St- I'm at you. She was also in the 1967 The Champagne, oh, the, Sh- the Champagne Murders, and most recently, she was a restaurant patron in the 2017 episode of The Young and the Restless. Wow. She's still at it. Oh, uh, good for her. <laughs> still going. You can see the full cast and crew at imdb.com. All right, let's uh, start the episode. Don't. <laughs> Don't do it. All right, we got the opening narration. 12 o'clock noon, an ordinary scene, an ordinary city. Lunchtime for thousands of ordinary people. To most of them, this hour will be a rest, a pleasant break in a day's routine. To most, but not all. To Edward Hall, time is an enemy. 
and the hour to come is a matter of life and death. Ugh. Time. <laughs> time is the enemy. Last time, time was our friend, but it became the enemy. And now, I guess it's the enemy again. Right? I'm pretty sure time is used either a theme or is just the word time is in like every episode. Why do you guys keep talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Edward Hall stands outside a large building. He looks completely worn out and stands leaning against the light pole, watching people move in and out of the revolving door. He staggers around, and an old guy comes to check if he's okay, and Edward says nothing and stumbles inside. Hey, pal, are you all right? You look sick there. I 100% thought he was going to try to sell him something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really pepper. did, yeah. I got the medicine right here in my coat pocket for you. <laughs> Uh, inside, Edward goes into the office of Dr. Elliot Rathman, MD. The secretary says we were expecting him and sends him inside to see the doctor. Uh, he nearly collapses when he goes in, and he says that he's tired. And Dr. Rathman says, oh, lay down. Edward lays down and closes his eyes. <laughs> and uh, he see, he starts to nod off, <laughs> and Rathman watches him slide jaw. Yeah, he just sits <laughs> in the chair and just... Like a bumpkin, uh, like. Uh, <laughs> uh, suddenly, Hall springs up, and he says he's the most tiredest man in the world. He's been awake for se- uh, excuse me, eighty-seven hours, and then he mustn't go to sleep, or he'll never wake up. Do you guys know what what the record is like? I know there's records for staying awake, but af- after a certain amount, like people's brains just go to jelly, and they usually uh, yeah. just yeah, they're done. They're not coming back. Yeah, the, the, there's no return. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact, folks. Stay for too long, you just you just dead. You just die. <laughs> you go into an irreversible coma. <laughs> There's no. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Like, you ever stay up for like a whole day and then like the, you gotta sleep for like 14 hours to make up for it? <laughs> yeah, but you can't do it in a row because somehow that makes you more tired. Yeah, so you do that 87 hours. You gotta sleep for like a week. No, you just die. <laughs> What is it? It's like four days, right? 87 hours? Or is that less than four I days? I think so. Uh, four days would be 96. Yeah, just, just under. Yes. That's math. <laughs> that checks out with my calculator that I can look at. Yeah, he... None of this is right. He's already dead. <laughs> none of this is happening. He's a ghost! <laughs> he is, yeah. <laughs> uh, we go to a commercial break, and when we come back, the doctor gives him a cigarette, of course! <laughs> yeah! You're fine now! Hey, a little pick-me-up. Here you go. <laughs> he actually says, there, there, now you feel better, don't you? <laughs> Back in the good old days, where the cure for everything was a cigarette. <laughs> well, luckily, no. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out everyone who remembers those good old days, they're gone. Mister Hall is surprised that Radman isn't a tiny German man, and he's convinced that Radman <laughs> can't help him, and that he only went because his regular doctor sent him. We learn that Hall is a draftsman. At 35 years old. Bullshit! 35! That dude is 55! <laughs> oh my god. What is, uh, he's single with a heart condition. Like, metaphorically, he's got a heart. That's why he can't love. He's single. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, like, like, for real, though. Like, for real. Uh, Hall goes to leave, and Ratman uses rever- uh, reverse psychology to get him to stay. Yeah, go ahead. Leave if you want. I don't <laughs> oh, care. He's the worst. Psych- this guy's just like... I kill, should I kill myself, Doc? Eh, if it makes you feel better. Eh, yeah. uh-huh. just, just smoke a cigarette before you jump. Yeah, I was, I was kind of, I was picking up what he was putting down. Just like kind of psych psychologist who's just like, yeah, do whatever, do, do whatever you want. I get paid either way. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's the fifties. You don't even need insurance. They just pay me. <laughs> who? Everybody. Them. Yeah, them. Just them. Them. That's what it says on my check <laughs> from them. It's signed T H E M. Could be a corporation or a group of something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't ask the question. <laughs> no, I, I, I just cast the check. So, Hall uh, goes over to the window and opens it and stares down to the sidewalk below. And you know, oh, that's quite a drop there. And yeah. Ratman is like, yeah, let's, let's get away from there. How many psychologists do you think just have a window just not locked or anything? <laughs> ten, ten stories up. I mean. Not not to spoil anything, but the end proves us locked or not. <laughs> <laughs> Does not matter. <laughs> like, oh I mean, wait, but no, because that was that was a dream. But so is. Oh this. wait, so is <laughs> this. Oh god. 
<laughs> oh, uh, good luck with this episode, yeah. folks. Holy jeez. Uh, all right. That's it. We're done. Join us next week. Uh, yeah. So come away from the window. Uh, Hall stares at a painting of a boat and tells the doctor <laughs> the story about how he can make it move with his mind. Yeah, and... All right. <laughs> Finally the crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. And the doctor's like, yeah, that's your imagination. He's like, no, but I can really make it move. And he's like, yeah, that's your imagination. Yeah. And he's like, no, but for real. He's like, yeah, that's how, like, for real. That's how imagination works. <laughs> so, but sometimes I can't control it. And he's like, oh, okay, all right. I he's guess. like, yeah, you're a crazy person. That's why you're here. <laughs> Uh, so his imagination would scare him just as if it was real. It's no good. Uh, he takes some pills so he can stay awake. I couldn't figure out what that was supposed to be. I don't know. How many, it says, what's it, how, how many grains he, a yeah, day? Yeah, he asked him how many grains Is are you taking? Is that a unit a... of measurement? Like. I, I don't, I don't know what, what, like, I, gunpowder? Like, is he just eating gunpowder? <laughs> some gunpowder. <laughs> The only you, way... you do, it's gunpowder or rice. Go oh. ahead, tell me what he's eating. I mean, obviously, the only way he could stay awake would be small explosions in his stomach, and he's not a seagull. Because <laughs> <laughs> the rice is blood. What you you don't run on an eternal combustion? <laughs> well, you know that truth train. I think they made the cotton gin. Gunpowder. Oh, and, and, and rice. R- that's what I was. Yeah, okay. That's what I was going. <laughs> No, right. seagull parts. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. I mean, all of America took place on the coast of the United States. I've never once heard anyone mention a seagull in the, in the history books. Hmm? Mm. They're all dead. They're all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man-made construct seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> Think, about Think about it. You think about it. Don't think about it. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so Hall is convinced that he won't live long and that he's developed... Oh, and that he also, like, I don't think this is fault. I think he actually may have done this, which is he developed a uh, rheumatic heart. Is that right? Rheum- yeah, rheumatic. Rheum- I don't know what that is, though. Can you look it up? I, I tried. Like, all I could find is, like, well, it can be caused by a fever. Like, how do you get a heart condition from a fever? That doesn't sound right to me. I mean, like, I don't want to know. I don't. That's how way. I don't know exactly how bad medicine was back then, and maybe you got a fever and that was it. <laughs> that was it. It's, <laughs> just, oh, it's just a hole in your heart. Why you? How come you're limping? Well, I got a fever when I was eight. Oh, oh Jesus. no! Oh man! Stay away from me! <laughs> I'm not gonna catch your limp. <laughs> maybe the, that was just the explanation for everything. Oh my God! Did he? Is he paralyzed from falling down the stairs? You would think. But it was actually, he had a fever. He had a fever? Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, Poor bastard. But that was just what they said, no, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, when, like, the L.I. Double R is like, oh, there's a, we got track maintenance, that's why we're late again. <laughs> there's a, a dead guy Six on the week in a row. Yeah, really, it's a dead, somebody threw themselves. Oh, I thought you meant it was a fever. <laughs> oh, the train is a fever. It's sick today, folks. <laughs> We can't go too fast. <laughs> it's going to overheat. His name is Thomas. Don't wake him. And it's... then you can't, because then if the train vomits, you, that's it. We got to shut down the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. We got to hose off the tracks. Yeah, we got to hose off the tracks, which is what we're doing anyway. <laughs> train vomit. <laughs> so, well, where are we? Here? Yeah, just gloss over just the train gloss vomit. Gloss over that train vomit. Do you want to know mean... what it looks like? No, no we're going we're gonna to go know, right past it's, this. It's, you know, What's oily. It Whatever. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Uh, he had a rhythmic heart at 15, so from that point on, no strenuous <laughs> exercise, no stairs, no, no shock, st- no stairs. What do you think the limit is? <laughs> <laughs> like, he just... Like, like he just, when, when no, do steps become stairs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, like, at what point are the stairs deadly? Like, can he go one flight up? Like, is it like, ooh, I how, cannot... How, my house has to have a ramp, it cannot have... A couple steps up to the door. Like, how high can he lift his knee before it's like, that's a step up! Oh, <laughs> or how many, like, how many, yeah, how many stairs does it become fatal? I don't know, man. That's a good question. Like, he's, he definitely does not live on the top of anything or yeah. work on the top of anything. <laughs> and this is the 50s. There ain't no ramps. There's no accessibility <laughs> no. for anything. If vitamins or cigarettes can't cure it, you are dead. Within think, weeks. You, ooh, but I just realized back then there was always a piano moving company, so they would just use that mechanism 
to hoist him up. Like, let's ignore dumb waiters, which were a thing back then. We're just, yeah. pia- just get on top of this piano. <laughs> this baby grand and yeah. all. <laughs> just ride this piano up to your wall. <laughs> we're already lifting a thousand pound piano. What's another 200 pound man on top of it? Yeah. <laughs> we're only four guys. I'm sure. I'm sure being balanced atop this <laughs> piano as we hoist you 12 stories up, that's not going to be strenuous. It'll be, just wear this derby and twirl this cane. It'll, <laughs> it'll be real easy for us. So three years ago, he read about a woman being murdered by a man hiding in her back seat in the car. And he tells the doctor about how he's been thinking about it ever since. And one time he was driving home and he swore he could see somebody in the back of his car. Even though he knew nobody was there, he thought that if he looked long enough, he could convince himself that someone was there. So he kept looking and... Then he almost crashes his car because he sees a woman in the rearview mirror. And I'm just like, well, you no, know, you were looking in the rear. You're dead. Yeah. You, you died way before you came in here. You crashed the car when you were staring in the mirror for five minutes straight. Oh, so his whole life <laughs> for the last three years. Yeah, he's just been shocked about. It's been a death, death yeah. yeah. Can I just say that this guy goes on this whole long thing about it. He's like, I cannot sleep. I've been up for 87 hours. And yet the first thing he does is like, I'm going to go lay down in this guy's office. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go lay down and close my eyes. Yeah. That's how I try to stay awake. <laughs> so much for goals. <laughs> yeah, he says that he knows that the next time he falls asleep, he knows that that woman will be in the dream and he'll die. Commercial break. I feel like this is the most commercial breaks we've gotten in an episode so far. Or at least the most obvious breaks. Yeah, I, I think the problem is it's... It's everything's happening in the office, so then there are just those awkward like cuts to fades to black where it's mm. I guess going a commercial. Uh, yeah, you know by uh, brought to you by Geritol. Yeah, Geritol and opium. I know you have stock in that company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stop advertising them. They're <sighs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's right. I mean, their competitors are just as good. <laughs> the competitors, yeah. Johnson's Miracle Cream. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it just works. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Ty- it really, like, literally, their their catchphrase or whatever was, tired blood, have Geritol. Tired blood. Tired yeah. blood. And make sure you use the promo code WWYMT. <laughs> it doesn't get you anything. Just please use it. <laughs> yeah, just, just use it. See what happens. It's a surprise to all of us. On all the websites. Every yeah. website you use, just use it. Yeah. It kills the internet. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> oh, so sorry. It saves the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Saved it. Nailed mm-hmm. it. All right. There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Hall says he used to dream in sequence as a kid. Each dream a chapter. He said uh, for a long time he didn't dream at all. But a week ago he started, I guess, again. Not like <laughs> for the first time ever. Yeah. Uh he went to bed and he dreamt he was in an amusement park and everything was warped and twisted. Which, that, that's an amusement park, that's, buddy. That's literally like... like... You're, you're, right now, you are afraid of reality. Like, you're not <laughs> dreaming some weird place. No, this is real. In the dream amusement park, Edward starts playing a carnival shooting game, but his attention is drawn by a carnival barker with the attraction Maya the Cat Girl. I was trying to figure out what the carnival game was. That he, like, the shooting gallery? I don't even know, yeah. Yeah, it was just, like, a giant, like, swirly, you know, like, the hypnotism thing? Yeah. yeah. And he's supposed to, like, shoot it? I don't know. There was I no there ma- was no target. Maybe it's it was one of those things where, like, you know, you hit it and the thing goes, burp, and it kind of falls over. But then it's just one giant it's target. It's one giant <laughs> one. That's fucking pretty boring. I don't know, man. Yeah. Bing! You hit it. Good job. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Rod, what? What carnival game should we use? I don't know. You're the one where it spins and you shoot it. I don't know which one that is, Rod. Just do it! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he's never been to a He's never, he's never been to a carnival. No. Um, so, yeah, that's right. Maya yeah, the cat girl. She seductively dances as, as drums play and... <sighs> Edwards is transfixed. Well, she certainly dances. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Seductively, yeah. Cat Lady has never danced. Ever. Well, like, well, he, I, what, you mean to tell me you're not familiar with that famous cat trope of how they dance? 
Oh, you mean... How all cats dance everywhere all the time? Let me just wiggle a little bit to the left, and yeah. uh, <laughs> what am I going to do now? A little little wiggle to the right? Uh, oh, I know. Lunge at him! <laughs> she just freaking, like... Argh! She goes to, like, choke him with some Frankenstein. Haven't you ever seen the Aristocats? <laughs> <laughs> That's the everybody part. Everybody. Everybody <laughs> wants to be a cat. Oh, I thought you were doing Backstreet Boys. I'm sorry. No. Backstreet is not bad. Or Cat Street is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sexiest dance they could show on TV back then. Has, well, my unsolvable mystery was, did uh, what came first, her showing her leg or Elvis doing his hip thing? Mm. Oh, Elvis is already famous by now. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. Yeah. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not gonna say he's peak Elvis fame, but he's like people know his name. Like, All right, people have heard of an Elvis. Yeah, his his song is getting popular at this point. But this has got to be like the first woman leg on television. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Before this time period, women did not exist from the waist below. Well, they all had wheels. They were all puppets. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't show, couldn't couldn't show a human woman on TV. <laughs> Uh, so, where was transfixed? Oh, uh, that's right. The drums start to speed up, and Edward runs away as Maya laughs. I don't know why this is funny. I don't know. I don't know why it's scary either. Nope. I don't know why any of it is happening, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. None of it is anything I go, oh, okay, what's happening next? I understand why he's afraid of this. I understand why she's laughing. No. 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 It's all a mystery to me, the whole thing. Uh, he says that he knew he needed to, to get away from her, but he wasn't sure why. Oh, God. I'm uh, glad he's confused, yeah, too. Yeah, good. Everybody's <laughs> yeah, confused. Great. Uh, there's something in her dark cat eyes. Did you get uh, any kind of cat vibe off of her? None. I didn't even know she had cat eyes. That is mis- that's a news to me. You can't just call... She's the cat woman. Okay, what what features about her are cat-ish? Mm, mm. None. None. Uh, In a dream, he sits on a bench and pulls out a cigarette to relax. Maya lights it for him. (laughs) And she asks him why he ran. She starts, again, seducing him and tries to lead him away. She wants him... Oh, she she wants to know why he's afraid. And he says, because this is all a dream. Makes perfect sense! Yeah. Why are you afraid? Because this isn't real. None of it's real, yeah. Well, that's a reason to be scared. Yeah. Oh, good. So nothing can hurt me. Perfect. I'm sleeping. I'm dreaming. This is the best I could come up with. <laughs> yeah. So she knows that it's a dream and leads him to the fun house and they go inside. Did you guys notice it's a dream? And he still had to buy a ticket? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the? What? He, all right. Not only, he knows it's a dream. So in theory, he could, like, do a lucid dreaming thing where he can control the dream. Sure. No. I'm just gonna buy this ticket. I'm gonna buy a ticket. Yeah. What a what a well. He's not allowed to have an exciting lamp. Right, what a room. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> so inside the funhouse, there's shrill laughter and scary images. They walk through the funhouse. Uh, they kiss. Edward is freaked out by the very bad animatronics. Yes. <laughs> I'd be freaked out, too. A robot Bigfoot. And, yeah, he starts to run away. And I'm just like, yo, what did people used to dream about that they, that this is supposed to be like, ah! like <laughs> there, there was no real horror in the world back then. No atrocities committed by man. Nope, not even that whole World War II thing. Huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we go back to the office and... Um, Paul says that he woke up and he realized that Maya was trying to kill him. He woke up with his heart racing. Ratman asks if he knows Maya or anything. Neighbor says, no, I've never seen her before, but she does look familiar somewhere. I don't know. Uh, he says that the next morning he was going to put off sleep until 1 a.m., but what? Well, I messed up that sentence. Uh, he says the next morning he was he put off going to sleep until 1 a.m., but then he was back in the park. Edward tries to run away from Maya, and she's like, relax, everything's fine, but it's, oh, no, it's too much excitement, that's all, it's too much excitement. She's like, it's just a dream. There's, there's no excitement at all. You, it's just a dream, okay. I'm telling you. <laughs> calm down. No matter how many times I watch this episode, I, the episode was telling me, like, there's no stakes in this. Yeah. This yeah. is, yeah. This, there's no excitement in this episode. You, you guy watching the TV, watching this? Yeah, this isn't it's scary. Not, I don't even know why this guy... I don't know why our protagonist is scared. Isn't it crazy? Uh, yeah. 
that is exactly the vibe I got off it. it. Like, I'm watching this episode going, like, I shouldn't care or trust about yeah. the protagonist. Yeah, and I feel like it's it's telling me that, but somehow they thought, you know. Yeah, sure, yeah. This is good. Okay, so, um, she's like, look, a roller coaster, let's go on that. And he's like, nah. <laughs> nah, didn't you hear the whole thing about no excitement? And she, she suddenly they're on it. They're just yep. on it. All right. And she's laughing and he's scared. And the coaster starts going faster and faster and faster. And she's like, jump, just jump off. <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, I'm like, yo, I don't even know what fear is anymore. Like, what <laughs> yeah. is even happening? I, I have lost connection with this emotion as an identity. <laughs> like, I don't even. So whatever. We go back to the, the Daga's office. And that was it. That was the end of the story. I yeah. woke up right then and there, and I know if I go back to sleep, I'll be right on that roller coaster again and with her, and she's going to push me off, and I'll die. And <laughs> Dude, it's this is bad. So, so I I regret that I didn't read the short story, because I, wa- I want to know if the short story in Playboy was this bad. Oh, uh, yeah. I, yeah. Could, like, did, did Serling go, like, wow, this is... This is fucking something. This is gonna be the first motherfucker I let write an episode of the Twilight Zone that's not me. Yeah, yeah. I I regret. Like I read the the other short story uh, from the last episode. Um, time and oh, last. Yeah, yeah. I read that short story, and again, I didn't really like it because it's the same. It's like so. Here's a story about a guy who just wants to read, and then he gets a chance to read. Now he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh. So I gave money to a sociopath. That's what I just did. Yeah. Oops. My, I learned my lesson now. Mm. Don't give money to crazy people. Because <laughs> they'll tell you a story about a puppy who wanted to race his whole life. Oh, yeah. So what when he grew puppy? up, he became a race puppy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, race yeah. puppy. And then 9-11 happened. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe maybe he survived. <laughs> All right. Let me just stop you real quick. I went and saw Into the Spider-Verse oh, boy, a couple days so ago. Good. And there was a trailer before the movie called Dog's Way Home. Oh my god. Uh, Dog's Way Home. Okay. Yo, it w- it fucking <sighs> First of all, it's Homeward Bound. Yes, yeah. thank it, you so it much. It is straight up Homeward Bound with only one dog and it just it shows you the whole movie. It was like, "Oh no, I I'm the dog and like I had a great owner and my life was great and then one day I chased a squirrel and I got away and then I did way across the country, but then at the end like he was getting married and I showed up at his wedding and it's like, "What?" Dog, you made it back to me? No way! And it's like, come see a dog's way home. I was like, what the fuck? Do you want to know why they did that? It's the same. There's one reason. If you see any trailer, there's another trailer that happens that you probably saw also with like the little girl and and everyone's like praying and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Show the entire movie with that one too. Why? These companies that have these religious overtones, like like in different ways, mm-hmm. like some are subtle. Like with the not Homer Bound one, where it's like, okay, they like there's like little things here, there, and like in a lot of scenes, there's like crosses in the background mm. and blah blah blah. They they need you to be like, okay, we can't get people to come see our movies because they're terrible and low budget, but we're gonna say the word prayer a bunch of times, and then we're gonna give them the entire storyline. This way, they don't they're not worried it's gonna be a sad ending. They they can't <laughs> think. They can't think. They can't think. If I don't know this movie has a happy ending, I don't want anything to do with it. Nah. Uh, yeah. That all checks out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, Kirk is that, Cameron is getting paid for these two movies. I guarantee <laughs> fucking to it. It ends with the the puppy returns and, and the gets swaddling swaddled up. up. Yeah, uh, that's it. You think like there are like nights where like he's all alone and Leonardo DiCaprio is like maybe if I said no to growing pains he wouldn't have gotten the pain <laughs> that he got and it like just because I feel so guilty that it happened. Like, it's my fault. It's all me. He says from his own private island. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah surrounded like, by supermodels. Yeah, literally laying on a bed made of supermodels. <laughs> yeah. One of them's like, Ow, he's like, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I love how, to us, DiCaprio is just like Mogatu from Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, he's like, if I go back to sleep, I'm going to go back to that dream, and she'll push me off the roller coaster. And, uh, but if I stay awake, the strain's gonna kill me. Oh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go get some fresh air. And the doctor's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that, dude. And he's like, no, I'm leaving. And he goes to leave. 
<laughs> you're still crazy. Where are you yeah, going? Yeah. And he's like, oh my God, your secretary is Maya. Oh, this is crazy. And Ratman's like, well, her name isn't Maya. Uh, so I don't know what you're talking about. And <sighs> Mr. Hall is like, uh, uh, <laughs> jumps out the window. Yeah. What? And uh, so Ratman gets out of his chair. He calls the secretary, Miss Thomason, and they see Edward is lying down in the shrink chair. And he, let me check. Now that I've called you in, let me check right now. And yeah. yep, you are looking at a dead body. Yep. Doesn't arouse you, my doggy <laughs> skills. Like, what? What's the point of that? Yeah, a hundred percent. Uh, he only came in a minute ago, and he lied down, and he fell asleep, then he screamed, which is what you heard, that scream, and then he died. Well, at least he died peacefully. <laughs> yeah, screaming. Right? That's... <laughs> totally accepting. It's like, well, <laughs> as soon as I that, I was like, what? Are you going to, what? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> My God, he's dead. Not even CPR, like, well, well I'm not that kind of doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I gave true. him a cigarette. That's true. In the beginning of the episode, he is like, yeah, people hate me. Maybe I should wear a disguise. Oh, it's no, like, but he didn't give him a oh, cigarette. Oh, that's true. I was thinking that. Was that was Dream yeah. Him. Oh, that's true. Oh, so I should have offered him a cigarette. Oh, wait. Dream him also didn't put on the glasses. Oh my god! Oh my god! We don't know anything about this guy. <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Uh, literally, all we know did, about this guy. Did did Hall's doctor even send him to that doctor? Was that the dream part? I don't even remember. Well, that was the dream part, but I would think that part his doctor really did send him to that. Mm. So, the, <laughs> so the only thing we know for sure is that a guy asked if he could help him. He brushed him off and went through into the office. The, and that's the, it. the only thing we know for sure is nothing's for sure. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah, so so he just dreamed up all... Maybe that's why he was be, such a bad psychologist. Because Mr. Hall is not a psychologist. He's like, well, how would... How would a psychologist talk to me? I don't know. Uh, maybe that's a good point. For all we know, he just came ah. in some random like accountant's office and laid down on his couch. Well, I don't think. No, we know it was a doctor. We saw an MD when he walked. Oh, in. okay, okay. And he, like, what was that? That wasn't the dream. Right? No, that oh, that wasn't the right. That wasn't the dream. Or was it? Maybe he walked into a random guy's office. That's what I'm saying. Laid in his couch. Yes. And then the guy was like, "Get out of here!" But he was already having. He was already dying. Having a done hallucination. Well, again, he might have died in that accident three years ago. <laughs> That's true. That's definitely so true. So this might all be... Yo, I'm done with this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This thing is garbage. All right, so look at the closing narration. They say a dream takes only a second or so, and yet in that second, a man can live a lifetime. He can suffer and die. And who's to say which is the greater reality? The one we know or the one in dreams? Between heaven, the sky, the earth, in the twilight zone. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the yeah. official list of every New Year, so it's c coming up soon, Yeah. Uh, uh, there's always the marathon of the, uh, the best Twilight Zone episodes. This is never on television, this episode. No? Yeah, this no. Th this, like, I don't think I've ever seen this episode before watching, like, on Netflix, mm. the, you know, the whole... I think because like at the end when I like when I got to the absolute end and they revealed the twist and I was like oh they fucking got me the death hallucination <laughs> yeah so my I think because of the death hallucination end I was like fuck you this is better than time enough at last like this is a great story but I think I'm just being well yeah I mean I'm, I'm biased that it's a death hallucination because <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great but I don't I still felt it was better than time enough at last that I was fucking. Oh. You can't hear me pouting. <laughs> but I'm pouting. Hmm. He's he's doing the same pouty face yeah. that, that fucking <laughs> Mickey does in, in Time Enough at Last. Hmm. <laughs> uh, my my question is is this the first time there's ever been a death hallucination on television or in any form of media? Oh, is this like the first? Is this the first time? Death, Ooh, like... I don't know, man. I don't know where the first death hallucination trope came from. I really probably should look that up, seeing how that's kind of my thing now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drop the ball on that one. <laughs> Be like somebody asking, like, oh, so what do you think of Jim Henson? Who? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> never heard of the guy. Never, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Puppeteer, you say? That's probably interesting. I don't. I know nothing about it, though. <laughs> so what do we have here? Um tropes and morals of the episode so to speak <laughs> are there any no 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 probably not so what, what amusement park of doom is a trope apparently what? scary amusement park 
That is... I'm pretty sure that trope was probably made largely by Scooby-Doo. All right, sure. Why but, not? I, how many episodes of Scooby-Doo is it like, well, look, gang, it's the old amusement park that's got shut down, and it's because old man Crotherson <laughs> like, well, knows that it's built on yeah. like a gold mine. They live in a, a very weird economy, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> pretty sure there's only, if you think about it, there's actually only like four episodes of Scooby-Doo. Of Scooby-Doo? Yeah. yeah. And that's... half of them start Don Knotts. <laughs> Those were later seasons. That's when they started bringing the celebrities and like the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh uh, yeah, Batman, Batman, and and Batman, Batman and Robin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like uh, I don't know what else. Jabberjaw. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. So did Jabberjaw play the drums? Or was that the car? <laughs> or was that the shark? No, the no, shark. Jabberjaw was Jabberjaw shark. Was a shark. What, no, okay, the octopus. The octopus played the drums. Oh, who the hell is that? Yeah, but I don't know what that's. I mean, I know of the octopus, but I don't know what. That was from. I don't think that was Jabberjaw. No, you was, can only have one. Yeah, Jabberjaw played guitar. I don't think he played anything. He was just a shark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm always With a positive. They were a band. Oh, show you any? What? You don't remember that? You wait, what? Show- <laughs> I'm not taking my pants off. <laughs> so another trope they used was he's dead, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Which is. When they find somebody who's dead. Like, well, yeah, you just, like, you touch his wrist, yep, dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the old, uh... Say oh, it. he's dead, Jim. Say Sorry, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that old trope, huh? <laughs> and apparently there's also a trope called properly paranoid. Yeah. All right, sure, yeah, he, no, this, he definitely, definitely was properly paranoid. That is 100%, I agree with that. And then, uh, death hallucination. Yeah, yeah. Although... He didn't write that down here. Uh, yeah, no, it's not real? Uh, no, he said it a million times. Um, I don't know if we did this for the last episode. Will we do the old Hollywood thinking cap where we try to rewrite? Nope. Uh, I don't think we did that for the last episode. Yeah, how? I don't even know how I would try to remake this. Yeah, no, this is, uh, right. like I said, I think it was pretty solid. I mean, it's not a fantastic episode, but it's, it's a pretty solid premise, I guess. Like, just, you know, I'm scared, and the scaredness kills me. Yeah, it's, it's pretty timeless. I don't think there's a thing you could do to jazz it up for 20 no, You can't top the death hallucination. <laughs> no. That's the moral no, of the you story. You can remove the cat girl from the story. Yeah, no, you could definitely do that. that. And the amusement that. park. You could, you could, because that, that wasn't a scary. weird, like, again, to like, Rod has never been to a amusement park. It's like, yeah, you know how you're, you're in an amusement park and then we'll, we'll do a fisheye lens. It's like, what? It's like, yeah, it's like, everything's all smoky and weird. You've never been to it. It's like, yeah, the, the roller coaster takes you 50 feet in the air and it goes 100 miles an hour until you die. It's like, that's that's probably not. No, that's... <laughs> Rod, were you, were you ever traumatized at an amusement park? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get out of here, Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, they don't sell jelly beans here. Oh, well, that's... That's why Sterling was so upset as a child, because... Reagan showed up to an amusement park. <laughs> they didn't sell any jelly beans. He went on a rampage. Ah! <laughs> okay, so finally we're going to have the last thing, which is guess that twist, y'all. The next episode is called Judgment Night. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a ship sailing from Liverpool, England to New York. It never got there, and one man aboard knew why. Next week, we will tell this man's story. The distinguished actor, Nehemiam, what ne Nehemiam, Persoff. That's definitely it. Yeah, why not? Plays the role of Carl Lancer. That's not a good <laughs> that, role. Yeah, that's, not, that's not what Lancer. <laughs> I like. Well, I mean, it has three A's in it, so. <laughs> no, that's that's only two. Oh well. So a haunted man. Oh no, yeah, a haunted man in a haunting story called Judgment Night. The ship sails next week. We hope to see you on it. Thank you and good night. So I guess it's a story about a haunted ship. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's it, on a World War Two ship, mm. and then uh, you know. So uh, the twist is he's the only one who died. <laughs> we'll just say it's a fish out of water story again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's gonna be the same twist that was from the pilot episode that wasn't used 
where it's like the guy goes oh, back in time and dies in World War Two, and then actually oh, dies. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, like not not the pilot for the actual show, but the unaired pilot yeah, or the uh, the, the Desi Lu one, yeah. which was also time based. It's all time. It's all time. It's all time. But he is clearly going through a midlife crisis. Oh, oh my he god! He is desperately in the dead center of one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, okay. Join us uh, for that next time. And uh, thinkyourprowrestling dot com returns to Center Ridge, Long Island, New York, January nineteenth for the King of New York twenty nineteen tournament. I'm looking to be the three time King of New York. I'm looking to reinstate that monarchy and i remember this one time where we were like yeah we're gonna do three last thing you're like wait isn't that mlk and we're like no you idiot that's in february yeah it turns out it is january yeah i know yeah you guys are the idiots no no i we were just testing you <laughs> i was just letting you know that you can be at ease now yeah yeah now that we're in that month and you can actually see it on the calendar <laughs> <laughs> you go, oh! so wait it is gonna work or it's not gonna work it is gonna work yes I mean, I hope it works. I'm living vicariously through you on that because I've wanted to do that for for years. And... That's fine. <laughs> I think between uh, between them raising the ticket prices for the show and uh, us mocking Martin Luther King. No, oh, yeah. it's not mocking. God, gotta... it's a tribute. Yeah, it's a mockumentary. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a tributary. Tributary. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, wait, it's a piece of water. <laughs> it is a tributary located between two islands, one of respect and one of kingship. And there in betwixt lies my victory speech. There you go. You heard it first, folks. You heard the promo here. No, right, no you know need to see it? the show. Yeah, no, don't even go. Don't even go. go. Don't even. Send, send your $20. Message me at the J Delta on Twitter. Ask me how you could send me twenty dollars, and I will gladly take your money through Venmo, PayPal, Bitcoin. Even though my Bitcoin is worth like <laughs> yeah. nothing now, point <laughs> four might... Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, well, the it's still worth. It's still the same amount of Bitcoin. It's just the real world money. It, it's like <laughs> it's not great. You too can learn how to turn thirty seven dollars into thirty seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, again, VictorProWrestling.com for that. Uh, Huge, what do you got going on this month of January? Uh, Next month. Yeah, man, so uh, if you go to TalkAmongstYourselves.Kinja.com, which has nothing to do with MyBirthday.Ninja.com, even though it sounds similar, Mm. you'll find a nice article that I put up uh, last month that got some traction, which was awesome, about how uh, Mass Effect made me question my own sexuality. Uh, besides that, it's a terrible, terribly written piece that took me months to put together, and then I got scared and edited 95% of it down to a horrible thing. He, but he, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. It's going to catch. He edited it down to where you like, <laughs> I turned on Mass Effect. I jerked off to an alien. <laughs> Bugman. Yo, that is the end. The, the best part is I kept the, I kept the title, and it's not even <laughs> remotely close <laughs> So it makes you think it's like, okay, so this guy doesn't, like, he's, like, fucking, he's jerking off to some, like, aliens. It's, like, nothing to do with it whatsoever. It's this whole thing on player agency and the, and the difference between me and the character that I build. But, n- but no, that title makes you think something totally different. <laughs> I, am, I painted my pillow blue and I'm fucking it. But no. Dude's jerking off to tentacle porn. But besides that, you can, uh. You can also find the link to that on my Twitter, which is at Atomic Huge, Huge spelled E U G. And uh, much like Mr. Delta here, you can give me money too. How about uh, <laughs> two tens for a five? Two tens for a five. <laughs> Just ask for change. Yeah. <laughs> Just ask for change. Yo, it's going to work. The two tens for a five thing, it's going to work. All right. So uh, go ahead and get tricked by Huge <laughs> if you feel like you need Don't to. Don't tell him that. <laughs> Yo, what is more of a trick, the I'm Bitcoin sorry. or me? I'm sorry. Go, on, go ahead and get uh, get tributed by you. <laughs> yeah. It's a tributary. Yeah, be a tributary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, please go to www.ymt.com for anything involving Why Would You Make This, where you can listen and download episodes for free if you don't like using iTunes or Google Play. Also, search Why Would You Make This on YouTube for videos of other hilarious things. Hilarious. What? Hilarious. 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 Huh? Hilarious. 
thing larius <laughs> <Thing hilarious. laughs> yeah. it, it's like uh as funny as that scene in the thing where the guy goes to perform with the defibrillator and then mm. his arms get mitten off oh no, this is like it's as hilarious as someone having a, a full body of hair and just like meow, 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 meow. oh <laughs> Clearly, you and I think of two different things when you hear the word thing. I guess so. Yeah. <sighs> you, do you want to chime in about something with rocks? No. Some sort All of right. rock-related rock object? Go ahead. Thing. What does that word mean to you? Oh, that's not even what thing is! I was thinking of Cousin It! <laughs> I, that, that's, why do you think I'm sighing the whole time? And I'm like, he's not gonna... Uh, but that But that will cut out. Well, now, we now I can't. Now I can't. You jerk. Yeah. Oh, I could have. Uh, I am hot to trot. Yeah. Oh, but that you want to keep it. Yeah, all right, well. <laughs> all right, so uh, our intro music is Falling Off Your Love by Kilt Paris. Uh, for Eugene J. Delta, I'm Jimmy Time, and please remember that without the mistakes of others, we'd be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves, support the arts. The preceding recording is for entertainment purposes only, and the views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Why Would You Make This, its owners, employees, or associates.